Streams are implicit sequences, and we'd like to be able to apply our standard higher order functions that manipulate sequences, such as map and filter. So let's talk about mapping a function over a stream. We saw a similar example of this, a special case, when we were squaring the stream earlier. So mapping a function over a stream applies the functions only to the first element right away. The rest of the stream that's mapped is computed lazily. So here's the definition of map stream, which takes in some function to apply to each element in the stream, and then a stream s. If, f, if s is the empty stream, well then, the map stream will also be empty. Otherwise, we need to know how to compute the rest, if anybody asks, which would be to map the stream, the same function over the rest of the stream. Finally, we return what you actually get when you call the function on the first element, and then if anybody asks, we'll compute the rest. So the important thing here is that this body of this function compute rest is not executed until compute rest is actually called. So we don't map the stream until somebody asks, and this is not called yet, it's only called if somebody asks for the rest. So, if I create an integer stream starting at 3, that would be 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I make m, which is also a stream that is created by mapping the function that squares over the elements of s, and I look at the first k values in that stream, I'll get 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, etc. Okay, so we can map a function over a stream. How about filtering a stream using a function? So in filtering a stream, we actually keep processing the stream until we find an element that stays. So filtering means apply a function to each element in the stream that returns a true or false value, and we keep in the stream that results only the true ones. So every stream needs to have an explicitly stored first value, which means when filtering, we need to keep looking for an element that actually stays. Here's the definition of filtering a stream. If s is the empty stream, then the filtered stream is also empty. We will compute the rest just by filtering using the same function, the rest of the stream. So now we have to decide whether s.first stays or not. If s.first stays, meaning the function that we're using as a predicate to filter with returns a true value, then we create a stream that includes that first element, s.first. And if anybody asks for the rest, then we'll compute it, but we haven't computed it yet. If it's the case that s.first is not in the result because it got filtered away, well then we have to actually compute the rest of the stream in order to find the first element. So by actually computing the rest of the stream, we're going to do more work. We're going to filter the stream s.rest, which means we actually look up the rest of s, and uh, that might involve some computation. And by the way, since we're calling compute rest and compute rest calls filter stream, this could actually run as long as we want because these are two mutually recursive functions that call each other. And the base case here is when we actually find an element for which calling the function on that element returns a true value. Okay, now we know how to map and filter. Let's look at a classic example, a stream of prime numbers. So here's the idea. The stream of integers, not divisible by any number k, less than or equal to n, which means the stream of all integers that are relatively prime to everything, less than or equal to n, is just the stream of integers not divisible by any k less than n, so that's something we expect to have already, and then we filter that to remove any element that's divisible by n. And this creates a stream of primes using a recurrence called the sieve of Eratosthenes. So we start out with just the integers, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We include 2 as a prime number, and we filter out all the multiples of 2, 
4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Those are not primes. Whatever's left is the next prime. Now with 3, we include that in our prime stream and we filter out any multiples of 3, such as 9. Next, we include 5. Now what gets filtered out when we filter all the multiples of 5? Well, 15 is already gone because we filtered out multiples of 3. 20 is already gone. 10 is already gone. But we do filter out 25 and 35 using this. And uh, so we continue. And the next prime is 7. And you can see that primes have been picked out. We can get as many primes as we want in this way. So let's define primes, which returns a stream. It takes in a stream that's already been filtered for any integers that are multiples of anything less than the first element in S. So the first thing we need to do is define whether something is not divisible by the first element in S. So that we can compute by attempting to divide k by s dot first. And as long as that doesn't equal zero, we know that this is not divisible by the first element in s. So if s were s dot first were two, then not divisible will only be true for odd numbers. Okay, now how do we compute the rest of the primes? Well, we just return all the primes that you get by filtering the stream s using a function not divisible. Finally, we return a stream that has s dot first as its first element and then computes the rest. Now let's see what this does. We have this function primes, which needs a stream to start with. And the stream that we're going to give it is the integer stream starting at 2. Now it should be the case that p dot first is 2 and p dot rest dot first is this, the second prime, 3, and p dot rest dot rest dot first is the third prime, 5. And if we ask for the first k primes, oops, if we ask for the first k elements of p, then we'll get the first 10 primes.